In this video, I'm going to review the basic journal entries a U.S. company would make if it were to sell a product to a foreign company and allow that customer to pay in a foreign currency. This will be a simple example that does not involve any type of hedging for foreign exchange risk. Here is our scenario. U.S. company sells products to a customer in France on October 15th. The invoice specifies that the customer will have to pay on January 20th of the following year and the selling price is 100,000 euros. Now we need to know what is the euro going to cost on these different days. So assume the following exchange rates. So on October 15th, the day we deliver the product to France, the exchange rate is each euro cost $1.10. Now of course on October 15th, we would not know any of those future exchange rates. But by the time we get to December 31st, we would know at that time that the exchange rate is now $1.14 per euro. So in that case, the euro has appreciated versus the U.S. dollar. Why appreciated? Because they've gotten more expensive relative to the U.S. dollar. However, 20 days later, January 20th, the euro is at $1.11. So between December 31st and January 20th, the euro depreciated right? It got cheaper in terms of U.S. money. And if you're wondering if these types of fluctuations are realistic, yes, here's a recent chart of the cost of euros in U.S. dollars. And you can see that the exchange rates do tend to fluctuate. So let's do the entry for October 15th. This is the sale of a product where the customer can pay later. So your account titles are the same as you would expect. You want to debit accounts receivable and credit sales. The problem here is we're allowing the customer to pay in euros. We can't enter euros into our accounting system. In our accounting system in the U.S., we need everything in the system to be measured in U.S. currency. If you try to blend a bunch of currencies, the system would quickly become meaningless. So we have to convert what would 100,000 euros be if we were to make them pay in dollars right away. So you take the exchange rate and you multiply by how many euros they're going to pay you. On October 15th, 100,000 euros would be worth 110,000 US dollars. So that would be the journal entry for October 15th. No additional journal entries are needed until December 31st. Why do we need one on December 31st? The customer's not paying us on December 31st. The reason is December 31st will be the end of the company's fiscal year. And under US GAAP, they are required to update the value of any asset or liability that is measured in a foreign currency. And that's what we have here. Our account receivable is measured in euros and euros might have changed in price. So we need to update the value of the receivable. Has it gone up? Has it gone down? So by December 31st, the account receivable has gone up because we're going to be receiving 100,000 euros. Originally, we thought they would be worth 110. By December 31st, we now believe that will be worth 114,000. So I don't need to make a debit to receivables for 114. I only need to debit the additional amount we expect to receive in value. So I already had the account receivable at 110. So to get it to 114, I need to add $4,000. So what are we going to call this increase? Because I also need a credit of $4,000. Well, this is like making any investment. You invested in euros. They went up in value. And so that would be a gain. So we're going to call this foreign exchange gain. Different textbooks will use slightly different titles, but the key is that this is a gain. It's related to foreign exchange and it will go on U.S. companies income statement in the current year. So now we've reached January 20th, the day that our customer is supposed to pay us the 100,000 euros. Let's assume they do make the payment. We need to update our receivable to what those euros would be worth. Are they still worth 114? like we thought on December 31st? No. Using the exchange rate for January 20th, each euro is now only worth $1.11. Multiply that times 100,000, it tells you that the receivable instead of 114 should now be 111,000. So we need to bring the receivable down from 114 to 111. That's a difference of 3,000. What will we call this decrease in value? This will be a $3,000 loss on foreign exchange. So the journal entry January 20th, but the first one is to record the foreign exchange loss. After all these adjustments, if you look at the receivables, we started at 110, 
We went up by four, down by three. The receivable is now 111,000. And that's what we're going to receive from our customer is $111,000 of value. Okay, I've moved things around to make some room. So now what you see on the screen is just January 20th. So we recorded the $3,000 of foreign exchange loss. Now we record the receipt of payment from the customer. So notice I didn't debit cash because cash would refer to US money. That's not what they sent us. They sent us euros. So first I debit foreign currency euros, 111,000. In a simple exercise like this, you would assume that US company does not have any reason to hold euros, that what they need is US money. So we'll assume that they immediately went to the bank and converted the euros into US money so my last journal entry is a debit to cash to represent U.S. money and a credit to foreign currency euros for 111000 to show that the euros we received are now gone and converted into U.S. money. And those are the basic journal entries for a U.S. company making a sale on credit where they allow the customer to pay in a foreign currency. Your textbook might combine some of these January 20th entries into one. That's fine. Do what your textbook or instructor wants you to do. And if you understood this example, you should be able to easily convert it into one where instead of selling products, the U.S. company is buying products and agreeing to pay 100,000 euros to some company in France. What's going to change is instead of dealing with an, a receivable, you'll be dealing with a payable.